Let's just look at yesterday and today. We heard so many good examples about where governance works at all the scales. Just this morning, there were four presentations looking at all scales where our governance works. Look at the meeting today. If the MIC does not organize this conference, inviting people from different uh, river basins and sub-river basins for us to sit here together, where would be a platform for us to discuss these things? So I think we also have to recognize that the existing Mekong River Commission is really helping to facilitate this talk. Where else would we be able to discuss with our upstream neighbors like China and Myanmar if there was not such a platform here? Everybody's concerned about who makes the decisions, but nobody's asking, regardless of who makes the decisions, how are they held accountable for those decisions? When we are talking about governance at the river basin level, then you are, the, the evidence is that because we do not have river basin level governance, the existing fragmented central driven governance is inadequate. So you're right. Because we do not have in this region uh, river basin governance that is close to the people that create for uh, the local level for cross-sectoral dialogue between ministers and stakeholders at the district level and so because we do not have it, you don't see the evidence. It's both. Bad approach and no commitment. And um, there are very good policies on paper, but no content. There's tons of papers, policy papers telling about integrated uh, transboundary uh, management, right? And, and MRC is supposed to do that and, and, and other sort of a regional agency. But, but it doesn't work. The last two days we talked a lot about watershed management, integrated water resources management, river basin management, but in the end we're talking about management of humans. And human behavior, I think, is to a large extent, if we like it or not, driven by either financial incentives or economic disincentives or even penalties. And uh, I was wondering, I would like to put it to maybe both sides of the panels, uh, if if the governance mechanisms, uh, at least future governance mechanisms, shouldn't reflect this fact somehow. We established the CESAN subcommittee in order to uh, address the, the issues. And uh, we also, I mean, organized such a very big meeting uh, with the NGOs, representatives, and local communities in Cambodia. So maybe my colleagues from VNMC no, can provide uh, information. Let, let, let me finish first. Let me finish first, uh, because yeah, because you you, you say that uh, that mechanism did not exist or did not work. I mean, as expected. So I like to to point out and I like to respond. But the bottom line is, did the villagers get compensated? You had all these nice meetings and discussions. Did they get any money? or any form of compensation to offset their losses. If we reflect to the trend boundary issue, trend boundary impact, even not on the mainstream, it's just only on the three boundary dam, still not yet uh, sold. And the RBO, if we discuss, if we're taking the case in Cambodia, it's almost more than 10 years and even not yet established. I mean, MRC is challenged all the time about transparency, all the time by NGOs, not only the international and everybody. And at the council meeting, NGOs, international community are there, and they are being held accountable, and if they're not transparent, they are being taken to task. Uh, Thila Pong from Thailand. Uh, I want to give some uh, suggestions. Uh, I think I, I would love to see uh, MIC or uh, whoever to set up some kind of a fund like a uh, uh, make home community uh, support fund. This one can uh, be a good mechanism or uh, uh, it can help to support local community to, who want to protect their watershed, who want to do uh, local research. 
the maybe what I understand the academic role in Thailand uh, playing a uh, quite important role in driving the development in the region. But if looking at Cambodia and Laos uh, might not play much role, and including me. <laughs> and also if looking at uh, Vietnam, uh, it's quite an uh, interesting uh, role. And again, the community still have a question, how can I count whether it's important or not yet important? This I, I would like to share. Because now we cannot talk about the plan. Because a different country have a different plan. Like in Laos, PDR, now you have a Nam Ngum. So that is a pilot in order to apply to other area. In Vietnam, we have some IBO like Madame Phan presented to you this morning. But in fact, work not very effectively. What is governance uh, if not dialogues? And in dialogues here, we are not talking only about national agencies. We are also talking about industries. We are talking about dams developers, dam operators, um, also the communities living around the, uh, the area. So I think we are, we are on the right track, and that's something that we have to acknowledge. Um, it does strike me, though, that uh, yesterday the outcome seemed to be that uh, local engagement um, is necessary but not sufficient, and it would strike me that the same is true today, that uh, top-down governance models are necessary but not sufficient. That seems to be the overall consensus that, uh, that I heard anyway. We had a number of conversations about this whole notion of authority. Um, what the, the central governing body is not giving authority over to a collective body, that's a challenge. And therefore, though, what's their questions raised about um, can, you, uh, can you also have authority without responsibility, which led into conversations as well about if people are affected by something, where do they go? How do they find out? There still doesn't seem to be effective mechanisms for those kinds of things. In general, though, it strikes me that the conversation really was the flip side of yesterday's, which is neither are sufficient on their own, um, and both need each other. So.